we're going to try this. This is for the amazing atheist. It's a he's a uh, commentator on YouTube. Uh, I recently came across his video, and so this is going to be my first time attempting to uh, comment. But here is the first part of what he said. So there's a chick by the name of Jessica Alquist. She's a 16-year-old girl who fought to get a prayer mural removed from her public high school, and she succeeded. The courts said that the mural was unconstitutional just because, you know, it is. Some imbecile state representative from Rhode Island, uh, Representative Peter Palombo, called Jessica an evil little thing. You know, this is an elected official attacking a 16-year-old girl. Just... I don't know. Do I need to have a commentary on that? This is not a 16-year-old girl who, like, snuck into her little brother's bedroom and hacked him up with a fucking machete or something. This is a 16-year-old girl who said, hey, that mural is unconstitutional. And the school's like, no, it's not. And she's like, okay, well, let's take it to the courts. And the courts ruled in her favor. And then this guy, an elected official, was like, ah, he's evil. Evil. He's using the word fucking evil. On top of uh, that asshole, Mr. Paul. All right, the rant goes on for about, uh, <laughs> it's a rather long rant. It's about 10... It's about uh, ten and a half minutes altogether, that rant. That's the first part, so I'm going to answer, answer this in parts. Uh, the first part, uh, I'm going to start with a disclosure that I am a Christian, but I am not uh, 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 the typical type of Christian. Most Christians today follow a, uh, a denomination or a course known as Western Christianity that started about 1000 A.D. Uh, first, it was Roman Catholicism that started in 1000 AD. Then, much later on, with, uh, with uh, Martin Luther, you had the Protestants come out. Uh, and it really, in, in the um, 1800s, that's when you had the Evangelicals come out of the Protestants. So, that's the Western line of Christianity. There is another line of Christianity, Eastern line, which is a much older. It goes all the way back to the time of Christ, without any without any reforms. And that's what Eastern Christianity is supposed to be. Eastern Christianity is supposed to be uh, the original Church of Christ without any reforms. What they did uh, to reform the Western Christianity was to one create the feudal system creating kings and monarchs elected by elected by or ordained by God and so the pope was the center of everything and all things belong to God and since God the pope was God on earth everything on earth belonged to the pope and what the pope did is set up vicarages to dole out all these the inheritance if you will because they took this from the uh, gospel of uh, the Beatitudes, the meek shall inherit the earth, he assumed that he is such a person as the vicar of Christ. And vicar means he who takes the place of Christ. That's the literal meaning of it. If you go back to the uh, Greek at the time of Christ, you will find that the term anti not only means opposition, but it also means to take the place of. So, for the Eastern Christians, when the papacy came out with the statement that they are the vicar of Christ, this was viewed by the Eastern Christians as the West standing up and saying, I am the Antichrist. And so it was rejected by the East. So you have two paths of Christianity. You have the Western Christianity, which is European, and you have the Eastern Christianity, which is not European. Now, I'm from the eastern side of the Christianity. My last name, Charis, comes from a Greek word meaning Karathanasis. That's the Greek, the, my original Greek last name is Karathanasis. When my grandfather came to the United States, it was shortened to Charis. 
Kalathanasis, if you go back and you, uh, you research the roots, you will find that we are the Greeks from Cappadocia, and that we are related to the Greeks all across Africa, all the way into the Asian continent, into, into India, Punjab, and those areas like that. We are not the white European Greeks. We are the dark, non-European Greeks. And that's what the term kara means. Kara means dark, black, colored, and not white. And so we are given the term kara, or kara thanasis, because we were the dark versions of the Greeks. We were not European. The Karas entered into regular, what we know as regular Greece today after the Turkish conquest and the Muslims way back then started massacring all the Christians. And so they had to flee that area and come into, into what is now known as Greece. So the area that my ancestors are from is no longer part of Greece. The Christians there are not really welcome anymore. If they don't have the protection from the governments, the, is, the Muslims and the Islamists will and have massacred just the way they're doing to the, uh, the Christians in Egypt, the Coptics. The uh, Coptics are also under uh, uh, siege by the Muslims in, in Egypt. They're being massacred. These Christians are not of the European variety where you, where you can simply oh, they're attacking us, so we're going to attack them. Our form of martyrdom is the Christian form of martyrdom, the proper form of martyrdom, where if you believe something, you do not fight, you do not blow somebody up because of your beliefs. You die for your beliefs, just the way Christ died on the cross. That is the proper Christian belief. Now, you can compare this to what happens in the West, and where the, Christian, the, the Western do denominations, starting from the uh, 10,000 AD with the papacy on, you can look at the Crusades, you can look at the Inquisitions, you can look at the uh, battles between in Ireland between the uh, Protestants and Catholics, you can look at uh, the witch burnings by the Protestants, you can even take the witch burnings that were done here, by the uh, which the by the Puritans who eventually became the, uh, the evangelicals, and compare this to the original statement uh, of Christ, where you are sp supposed to die for your beliefs peacefully. Christ was an individualist as a person, but he was also a pacifist. He did not believe that you should fight back. So, most of the atheist views come from their experience, not from the East, because most people don't know about the Eastern Church, but comes from the West. And it's a response, the atheists, are, if you hear, in, from what I've heard, most of the atheists say, their objections are not to the original Eastern Church of Christ. It's to the Western Church, to the European Church. Now, as for this uh, this whole Jessica thing, or whatever her name is, I, kept, I forgot her name at this particular point in time. The, pro the mural is constitutional for one particular reason. Uh, have you ever heard of the ter of the the, the charter or the um, the uh, right known as the First Amendment? Right, free speech, freedom of religion. Right. So, as long as someone's not forcing you to look at this, or forcing you to say something, then the presentation of, uh, of whatever it is, is protected by the First Amendment. The First Amendment is not designed to protect speech that you like. The First Amendment is designed to, speak, to protect speech that could be offensive, or, in the initial term, illegal. Before free speech, and before the concept of free speech, if you said something against the crown, or something against somebody that, we, that, that was powerful enough, that was considered to be illegal, you could be taken to jail and you could be executed for it. This is where free speech came from. And this is why DCA, the Digital Copyright Act, is a violation of free speech. This is why SOPA, the new, uh, uh, the new uh, bill that's trying to get passed through the uh, the, uh, the House and Senate 
Uh, that's why that's unconstitutional. It's a violation of speech, free speech. That's why uh, IP protected is a violation of free speech. That's why this whole concept of piracy, intellectual properties, pirating intellectual property, that's all bullshit. That's, a, that's all coming from a media industry that wants to dominate. It is not Christian. It is not uh, free speech. It is not American. The thing is, when you stand for free speech, yes, the girl may have not liked what she saw on the sign, but that is not proper Americanism to go and take that sign down because you object to what it says. Free speech, if you stand by free speech, means you may not like what the person says, you may not like what the person shows, but you defend that person's right to say what they say, to show what they show, regardless. And that's why, because you're supporting his right. If I infringe on somebody's right to free speech, they're going to turn around and infringe on my right to free speech. And this is exactly what happened to the girl. She went into court and forced her views of what people couldn't and couldn't see. She violated the First, the first Amendment with a court order. So what happens? People turn around and start calling her evil. If you step into the political limelight and you, you don't defend the uh, Constitution, or even if you do defend the Constitution, and particularly the, the most important part of the Constitution, this is the fulcrum of the uh, Constitution, the, the First Amendment, the right to free speech, if you don't do that, then don't expect not to be attacked. Don't, don't expect not to be attacked. Don't expect people to say, hey, bravo, 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 and, and that's it. When you stand up and do crit criticism, expect to be criticized. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if someone uses terms that aren't pleasant, or, or you know, if, if you watch the rest of this guy's um, uh, uh, video, you'll see his whole video is filled with what are called graphical explanations or graphical punctuation where the terms are very strong, they're right to the point, and you can take it easily as an insult. But that's his point of view. He's got his right to his point of view. He's got his right to uh, say what he says. If you believe in free speech, and uh, YouTube is sort of on the fence about this, sometimes they allow free speech, sometimes they don't. It depends on how much, uh, political pro how much political and legal heat they get. If they get too much legal heat, they will uh, start uh, taking off uh, 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 um, songs that are pirated, you know. But the thing is, is that if you don't protect free speech, then freedom will slowly start to disappear. So this is what I have to say, and it should be up on the internet in just a few minutes.